In the city of Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a Roman army officer in what was called the Italian unit. He was a religious man. He and all the others who lived in his house were worshippers of the true God. He gave much of his money to help the poor people and always prayed to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, Cornelius had a vision. He clearly saw an angel from God coming to him and saying, Cornelius. Staring at the angel and feeling afraid, Cornelius said, What do you want, sir? The angel said to him, God has heard your prayers and has seen your gifts to the poor. He remembers you and all you have done. Send some men now to the city of Joppa to get a man named Simon, who is also called Peter. He is staying with someone also named Simon, a leather worker who has a house beside the sea. The angel who spoke to Cornelius left. Then Cornelius called two of his servants and a soldier. The soldier was a religious man, one of his close helpers. Cornelius explained everything to these three men and sent them to Joppa. The next day, they were coming near Joppa about noon when Peter was going up to the roof to pray. He was hungry and wanted to eat, but while they were preparing the food for Peter to eat, he had a vision. He saw something coming down through the open sky. It looked like a big sheet being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of animals, reptiles and birds. Then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter. Kill anything here and eat it. But Peter said, I can't do that, Lord. I have never eaten anything that is not pure or fit to be used for food. But the voice said to him again, God has made these things pure. Don't say they are unfit to eat. This happened three times. Then the whole thing was taken back up into heaven. Peter wondered what this vision meant. The men Cornelius sent had found Simon's house. They were standing at the door. They asked, Is Simon Peter staying here? While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Listen, three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Go with these men without wondering if it's all right, because I sent them. So Peter went downstairs and said to them, I think I'm the man you are looking for. Why did you come here? The men said, A holy angel told Cornelius to invite you to his house. He is an army officer. He is a good man, one who worships God, and all the Jewish people respect him. The angel told him to invite you to his house so that he can listen to what you have to say. Peter asked the men to come in and stay for the night. The next day, Peter got ready and went away with the three men. Some of the believers from Joppa went with him. The next day, they came to the city of Caesarea. Cornelius was waiting for them and had already gathered his relatives and close friends at his house. When Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him. He fell down at Peter's feet and worshiped him. But Peter told him to get up. Peter said, stand up. I am only a man like you. Peter continued talking with Cornelius. Then Peter went inside and saw a large group of people gathered there. Peter said to the people, You understand that it is against our law for a Jew to associate or visit anyone who is not a Jew. But God has shown me that I should not consider anyone unfit or say they are not pure. That's why I didn't argue when your men asked me to come here. Now, please tell me, why you sent for me. Cornelius said, Four days ago, I was praying in my house. It was at this same time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly, there was someone standing before me wearing bright, shiny clothes. He said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and has seen your gift to the poor. He remembers you and all you have done. So send some men to the city of Joppa and tell Simon Peter to come. He is staying with another man named Simon, a leather worker who has a house beside the sea. So I sent for you immediately. It was very good of you to come here. 
Now we are all here before God to hear everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Peter began to speak. I really understand now that God does not consider some people to be better than others. He accepts anyone who worships Him and does what is right. It is not important what nation they come from. God has spoken to the people of Israel. He sent them the good news that peace has come through Jesus Christ, the Lord of all people. You know what has happened all over Judea. It began in Galilee after John told the people they needed to be baptized. You know about Jesus from Nazareth. God made him the Messiah by giving him the Holy Spirit and power. Jesus went everywhere doing good for people. He healed those who were ruled by the devil, showing that God was with him. We saw all that Jesus did in Judea and Jerusalem, but he was killed. They put him on a cross made of wood. But on the third day, after his death, God raised him to life and let him be seen openly. He was not seen by everyone, but only by us, the ones God had already chosen to be witnesses. We ate and drank with him after he was raised from death. Jesus told us to go and speak to the people. He told us to tell them that he is the one God chose to be the judge of all who are living and all who have died. Everyone who believes in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. All the prophets agree that this is true. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who were listening to his speech. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the Holy Spirit had been poured out as a gift also to people who were not Jews. They heard them speaking different languages and praising God. Then Peter said, How can anyone object to these people being baptized in water? They have received the Holy Spirit, the same as we did. So Peter told them to baptize Cornelius and his relatives and friends in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. The apostles and the believers in Judea heard that non-Jewish people had accepted God's teaching too. But when Peter came to Jerusalem, some Jewish believers argued with him. They said, You went into the homes of people who are not Jews and are not circumcised, and you even ate with them. So Peter explained the whole story to them. He said, I was in the city of Joppa. While I was praying, I had a vision. I saw something coming down from heaven. It looked like a big sheet being lowered to the ground by its four corners. It came down close to me, and I looked inside. I saw all kinds of animals, including wild ones, as well as reptiles and birds. I heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter. Kill anything here and eat it. But I said, I can't do that, Lord. I've never eaten anything that is not pure or fit to be used for food. But the voice from heaven answered again, God has made these things pure. Don't say that they are unfit to eat. This happened three times. Then the whole thing was taken back into heaven. Suddenly, there were three men standing outside the house where I was staying. They had been sent from Caesarea to get me. The Spirit told me to go with them without wondering if it was all right. These six brothers here also went with me, and we went to the house of Cornelius. He told us about the angel he had seen standing in his house. The angel said, Send some men to Joppa to get Simon, the one who is also called Peter. He will speak to you, and what he tells you will save you and everyone living in your house. After I began speaking, the Holy Spirit came on them, just as he came on us at the beginning. Then I remembered the words of the Lord Jesus. John baptized people in water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. God gave these people the same gift he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. So how could I object to what God wanted to do? When the Jewish believers heard this, they stopped arguing. They praised God and said, 
So God is also allowing even those who are not Jews to change their hearts so that they can have the life He gives. The believers were scattered by the persecution that began when Stephen was killed. Some of them went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. They told the good news in these places, but only to Jews. Some of these believers were men from Cyprus and Cyrene. When these men came to Antioch, they began speaking to people who were not Jews. They told them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord was helping these men, and a large number of people believed and decided to follow the Lord. When the church in Jerusalem heard about this, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. When he went to Antioch, he saw how God had blessed the believers there. He was very happy. He encouraged them all, saying, Always be faithful to the Lord. Serve Him with all your heart. Many more people became followers of the Lord. Then Barnabas went to the city of Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he brought him to Antioch. They stayed there a whole year. Every time the church came together, Barnabas and Saul met with them and taught many people. It was in Antioch that the followers of the Lord Jesus were called Christ followers for the first time. About that same time, some prophets went from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and spoke with the help of the Spirit. He said, A very bad time is coming to the whole world. There will be no food for people to eat. This time a famine happened when Claudius was emperor. The Lord's followers decided that they would each send as much as they could to help their brothers and sisters who lived in Judea. They gathered the money and gave it to Barnabas and Saul, who took it to the elders in Judea. During the same time, King Herod began to do harm to some of those who were part of the church. He ordered James, the brother of John, to be killed with a sword. Herod saw that many of the Jews liked this, so he decided to arrest Peter too. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. He arrested Peter and put him in jail, where he was guarded by a group of 16 soldiers. Herod planned to bring Peter before the people, but he wanted to wait until after the Passover festival. So Peter was kept in jail, but the church was constantly praying to God for him.